Good afternoon. I'm Tonsi Whalen, and I know I'm in between you and the bar. <laughs> it's a very uncomfortable place to be. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. And uh, I actually was here last year at the same symposium, uh, where I was at that time president of Rainforest Alliance. So it's great to hear all the terrific work that people are doing around rainforest conservation and sustainable agriculture. We had worked with um, 6,000 companies around sustainable practices. And I, uh, a couple of months ago, was recruited to come to Stern. And I actually graduated from NYU undergrad. And I had been thinking about what to do next. And I wanted to take everything that I had learned in working with business and nonprofits and producers all over the world and bring it to Stern to start a center for sustainable business. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to talk to you about that today. So to start, let's see if my slides work. Yes. Oh, is that just showing half up there or no? Just here. Okay. So first of all, who thinks the goal of a corporation should be to maximize profits for shareholders? Hands up. Nobody. Wow. So who thinks manage, uh, manager compensation should be tied to stock price to incentivize performance? Anybody? So a lot of behavior, despite nobody in this room raising their hand, or maybe one person, a lot of behavior today is tied to this belief system. But actually, this has only been orthodoxy since the 1980s, when academics said it would be easier to get accountability for managing stock price and profit for shareholders than managing to a more complex stakeholder model. And by stakeholders, I mean employees, suppliers, and society, as well as shareholders. As you will notice, these 80s icons have passed on. So too, the shareholder model. A consensus is emerging that the 80s shareholder model has placed an unhealthy emphasis on short-term results. I don't know if you've seen um, the CEO of BlackRock, Larry Fink's letter, most recent letter to shareholders, where he talks about the dangers of, uh, of short-termism. We've also seen that it destroys value for employees, for suppliers, and civil society. We see innovations like uh, tax inversion, um, job offshoring, you know, uh, uh, destroying value, and also, as we all know, huge inequity between CEO and, uh, and employee pay. And we've also seen this model lead to scandals like Enron and the mortgage derivative crisis. And because this model requires ongoing, exponential, short-term um, growth, we are consuming natural resources at the rate of 1.6 planets, resulting in challenges such as climate change, water scarcity, and loss of biodiversity. Now, interestingly, the modern corporation got its start in the 1800s, when we needed long-term capital investment in public goods such as, such as railroads. The focus back then was on long-term investment in providing value to society. We need to bring back that model with an added focus on sustainability. Today, we see the signs of change. Impact and socially responsible investors, social entrepreneurs, and benefit corporations are trying to make sure that this is not the world that we create. For those of you who can't read it, it says, Yes, the planet got destroyed for, for a beautiful moment in time. We created a lot of value for shareholders. But we need all corporations to act as benefit corporations, all entrepreneurs to be socially minded, and all investors to invest for impact if we are to solve the major challenges confronting society. The data shows us that companies that perform well on environmental and social <laughs> and governance metrics outperform conventional companies financially. This study by Deutsch, this is a meta study by Deutsch Wealth Asset that looked at 2,500 studies on ESG, the correlation between ESG data and uh, financial performance. And you see from the happy flowers that about 48% um, to 63% of these studies found a positive correlation between companies that were um, uh, performing well on ESG data, and, and, uh, and then less than the unhappy flowers are between 7 and 8% found a negative correlation between positive financial uh, performance and positive ESG data. We also see on the other side of the coin that ignoring sustainability issues destroys value. This study by McKinsey found that sustainability risks 
like restricted license to operate and reputational damage, rising operating costs, and supply chain disruption can destroy up to 70% of EBITDA. And the research uh, demonstrates that sustainable shareholder models result in better long-term performance. So for example, Chiquita, a company that Rainforest Alliance worked with, saw their productivity go up 27%, their costs go down 12% as a result of their uh, mainstreaming sustainability into their production. Walmart, $12 billion in re reduced costs through uh, applying a much more environmental approach to packaging. Havas Meaningful Brands found that top meaningful brands enjoy 46% higher share of wallet than low performers. Reduce risk in reputation and supply chain. Nespresso, for example, high quality coffee company is working with nonprofit organizations, farmers, and government to ensure that they have a sustainable, high quality uh, source of coffee long term. In terms of customer, employer, and employee, supplier, and civil society loyalty, we see that enhanced. For example, a study compared companies with um, strong sustainability programs to those with poor ones and found that in the former, morale was 55% better, public image was, uh, image was 43% uh, stronger, and employee loyalty was 38% better. We also really need companies to, um, in a sustainability model, at a mainstream level, really uh, uh, provide a positive contribution to our future. Whoops, sorry. But we're stuck in an outdated paradigm. We generally put, create, put creating wealth for shareholders before other priorities that are critical to the long-term health and purpose of the company as well as society. <coughs> so the newly created uh, Center for, uh, Stern Center for Sustainable Business aims to upend conventional thinking and help future and, biz and current business leaders learn how to mainstream sustainability and manage organizations in a resource-constrained world. We will need new knowledge and skills. Business le leaders will need to understand environmental and social risk. They'll need to learn how to engage stakeholders across a wide range of interests. They'll need to learn how to manage transparency in social media. They'll need to be both design thinkers and system thinkers. And they'll need to embrace an ever-increasing rate of change and complexity. At the Center for Sustainable Business, we will offer students and executives practical hands-on courses in these skills through the lens of sustainability and incorporate them into core curriculum. The first course, Sustainability for Competitive Advantage, will be offered in the fall. We will work with businesses to design better tools to analyze the sustainability business case and to incorporate its tenants into management. We have several companies already signed up to do this. We will work with the investment community to help them mainstream sustainability into valuation and into investment decision making. Citibank, who helped us launch this center with a gift of $1 million, Goldman Sachs, and other financial institutions are eager to engage. We will help students find internships, jobs, and learning opportunities with businesses leading these efforts. For example, we have an upcoming jobs fair on March 30th um, on jobs with purpose, hosted by Vice Media in Williamsburg, so it's going to be cool, um, and collectively an association of brands such as Unilever and uh, Google. Whoops. Public opinion is behind our work. According to the 2016 Edelman Trust Barometer on businesses, consumers think that CEOs focus too much on short-term financial results and that they should focus more on positive long-term impact for society. Together we can change this paradigm. Please contact us. We'd love to work together, and thank you.